From murder to UFOs to grand escapes, not every case can be solved. Hey everyone, my name is Rachel Fisher and welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10 and today, if you guessed we are reviewing some freezing cold cases, then you are correct. Pat yourself on the back. So without further ado, let's jump right into our top 10 mysteries the FBI couldn't solve. Coming in at number 10, we have the escape from Alcatraz. Now, if there's one place you didn't want to end up if you did something rotten, it's Alcatraz. We've all heard of it. The inescapable island used as a prison for extreme convicts in the USA. That is until June 2nd, 1962, when three men somehow did the unimaginable escape. Alcatraz. Brothers John and Frank Anglin, along with Frank Morris, all escaped this island, and to this day, the mystery remains, you guessed it, unsolved. Apparently, they had an arts and crafts club in Alcatraz because the men had made dummies out of plaster, flesh colored paint, and real human hair designed to make them look asleep. They were pretty good. As soon as guards discovered they were missing, the whole place shut down and they began their search. Fortunately for the investigation, but unfortunately for the guy who got left behind, one of them didn't make it out in time, so he helped fill in the gaps. The group began planning in December and fashioned a makeshift drill out of a broken vacuum and loosened the vents at the back of their cells. After sneaking out through the vents, they ran down a typically unguarded corridor and made their way to the rooftop towards their secret workshop. They used over 50 raincoats to fashion makeshift life vests and a rubber raft to help them cross the shark infested water surrounding the island. They also built wooden paddles and used a musical instrument as a way of inflating the raft. Navigating through a series of shafts to get to the rear of the cell house, the men then climbed over the fence with their gear and sailed away to freedom. So to be fair, they did find out how the men made their escape, but whether they actually made it remains a mystery. Their plan once they got to land included stealing clothes in a car, but no thefts were made. Since their escape, no trace of them has ever been found. Coming in at number 9, we have the anthrax care. This was a case that the FBI let in right through the front door and still couldn't solve it. Senate Majority Leader Tom Daschle had no idea what was about to happen next when he received a letter on October 15, 2001. Unbeknownst to him, this letter was laced with anthrax, a serious infectious disease. The worst part was he wasn't the only one to receive a letter like this and 5 people died and 13 people fell ill via these mail attacks. Some even suspect that even more people received these letters but did not fall ill due to the poor quality of the anthrax. The next few years would consist of many lawsuits and they still had no clear idea of who the culprit might be. That is until Bruce Ivins, a government scientist and suspect committed suicide. They thought they had him, but even a pool of scientists couldn't confirm that Ivans indeed did it. They still don't know to this day. Do, 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 do. And coming in at number 8, missing Tammy J. Swiggy. Almost 30 years ago, the case of Tammy J. remains unsolved and is still undergoing investigation. Investigators hope that by using updated technology, they may be able to uncover new clues regarding her murder. In August of 1992, Tammy's Pontiac was found abandoned on the side of the road and her body was later discovered in Missouri, 500 miles away. Despite over 200 pieces of physical evidence, they still can't uncover a single trace of who her killer Killer was. The only piece of significant DNA they found was a beer can nearby, but there was no one they could match the DNA to in their criminal database. Even still, the police are unsure as to whether it even relates to the case. The closest they've come to finding the killer was when officers arrested Clark Perry Baldwin, a 58 year old man they tied to three murders and potentially a fourth he committed between Tennessee and Wyoming. But still, in many regards, the murder of Tammy J remains open. We have to talk about the Black Dahlia. January 15th, 1947. And the severed body of 22 year old aspiring actress Elizabeth Short was found by a mother and child going for a walk in LA. She would later be dubbed the Black Dahlia as Elizabeth was often noted to wear black clothing and because of the movie Blue Dahlia, which was out at the time. Despite the harm done to the body, it was obvious that she was not killed where she was found as there was no blood at the crime scene. Due to the precision and apparent expertise of the murder, many investigators believe it had to be someone in a medical field. But sadly, despite a massive manhunt and countless investigations, the culprit was never found. But even to this day, many people remain passionate about uncovering the true murderer. Steve Hodel, for example, a retired Los Angeles police detective, has developed a captivating case that the murderer was indeed his own father, George Hodel. George Hodel was an impressive doctor in his field, but left his son and family behind when Steve was nine. When Steve found old photos in a bound wooden case of a woman with a striking resemblance to 
to short, he had to investigate. Despite the evidence he has produced, no one can really claim for sure Dr. Hodel was the murderer. But what if? Cold Valley Disappearances Lewis Clark Valley was nicknamed Cold Valley after a string of disappearances from 1979 to 1982 left the country astounded. Five people disappeared, but only three of the bodies were ever found with no culprit to name. The first of the disappearance was Christina White, who never arrived home, and her schoolwork was found scattered on the outskirts of Osoden. She and her bike were never found. Then Kristen David never finished her bike ride from Moscow, Idaho to Lewis Clark Valley, and her body was discovered by a fisherman who found it floating in a garbage bag in Snake River. Then sisters Nelson and Brandy Miller disappeared while walking to the grocery store, while Stephen Purcell, a friend of the two women, also disappeared that night. The bodies of the sisters were found off the side of a highway near Kendrick, Idaho. FBI and the police believe the cases to be linked due to the similarities the victims shared, and Detective Nichols believes that all evidence points to one perpetrator, but she won't reveal his name until enough evidence has been found. But that's just the problem, there is barely any evidence to collect. Despite Nichols' belief, some investigators believe there were different killers, but no one can be sure. The case remains unsolved to this day. The Berkshire UFO sighting. Now we've talked about the cases the FBI couldn't solve, but what about about the ones they didn't want to. This is one of the most famous alien abductions the world has ever seen, and no one can really deny it. In 1969, Tom Reed in Berkshire, Massachusetts was riding in the car with his brother, mother, and grandmother. As they were crossing the Sheffield Bridge, they caught sight of some mysterious lights coming up from behind them. Suddenly, the environment changed, and it felt like they were in the middle of the hurricane. Next thing, they remember they were back in the car, his mother and grandmother had switched places, and realized that over two hours had passed. All they could recall were images of being in a hangar with people around. Several eyewitnesses witnesses also saw the lights and even a few media outlets cover the phenomenon. But what's even creepier is that a memo written by Guy Hoddle, the head of the field office in Washington, wrote a report in 1950, 10 years earlier, that stated that three flying saucers were recovered in New Mexico. But the FBI never followed up on it. Hmm. Could it be that these flying saucers had something to do with the mysterious events of Tom Reed? Or was there a reason the FBI didn't give this case the attention it deserved? I guess we won't know. Will we? Coming in at number seven, the LaSalle Street murders. There's a lot of murder. I'm sorry, guys, but it's here. In 1971, Bob Gers, Bob Hinson, and James Barker were all found murdered at their home. Their only hint? A bloody footprint left behind. The three men all worked together, and considering there were no signs of breaking and entering, the police then assumed that they also knew the murderer. Upon their first interrogations, their primary suspect became Theodore B. Uland, who said he last spoke to Hinson at 9 and Gers at 9.30. Hinson and Gers had both worked for him, and police began to suspect that Uland had financial motivations as he blamed the men for stealing equipment, and that he had a life insurance policy out on his two former employees. It was discovered that Hinson, Gers, and Barker all were notorious parties who left a series of lovers in their wake. It was then considered that perhaps a jealous lover or husband took revenge on the three men. They then discovered that one of those women visited the house around 1am, but left when there was no answer. The biggest obstacle to this case was the lack of technology as the police were not equipped with forensics at this time, which meant that the amount of legwork that they were required to do slowed the case down substantially. As a result, the murders remained unsolved. Coming in at number three, the Hall Mills murder. Investigators initially thought that this 1920s case was a lover's quarrel gone wrong, but no sooner did things get a lot more complicated. In 1922, Reverend Edward W. Hall, who was a pastor in New Brunswick, and Eleanor R. Mills were found murdered. Their bodies were discovered lying side by side, dressed very neatly near a crab apple tree, a spot considered ideal for lovers. Torn love letters were scattered among their perfectly placed bodies, and they soon found out that the letters were addressed to each other. Both Eleanor and Edward were married, however, so as news of their ardent romance hit the tabloids, the town went wild. The police were confident. They were like, this is easy. We're going to solve this in two days tops. Four years later, still nothing. His wife was accused, who suspiciously had some of her clothes sent off and re-died. His rich brother with a short fuse was a suspect. The only witness was a woman named Jane Gibson, who said she saw four people but the crab battle tree. After following a suspicious figure around her farm nearby, she then heard a gunshot, followed by screams of a woman. But then her story started changing here and there, and anyways, enough people were accused that they really never got straight down to the story. So I guess, sadly, we will never know. Coming in at number two, the Tylenol tamperings. This next mystery inspired the phrase, do not use if seal is broken. The Tylenol murders of 1982 changed the game. 12 year old Mary Kellerman complained of a sore throat one morning, so her parents gave her one extra strength Tylenol. Unbeknownst to them, however, it was laced with cyanide and sadly Mary passed away. What soon followed was a series of Tylenol related deaths, all including cyanide poisoning. Fortunately, any bottles containing traces of the substances were removed before anyone else made this deadly mistake, but police still wondered, 
How? The only link they found was a man named James Lewis who wrote a ransom letter for a million dollars to Johnson to Johnson claiming to be the killer, but considering he had no relationship to Chicago, which is where the murders took place, he was instead charged with extortion. But still, police believe that someone must have taken the bottles off the shelves and tampered with them, but case remains unsolved. And last but not least, we have the Zodiac Killer. If you're a fan of all cases cold, well then you've heard of the Zodiac Killer. I mean there's a movie about it. Between 68 and 69, the Zodiac Killer chose seven victims in the northern part of California, and luckily two victims survived. This cryptic killer gained notoriety by plaguing investigators with ciphers, threats, letters, and information. The Zodiac even phoned the police and admitted to the killings. He loved the attention and threatened to collect more victims should the police not allow his ciphers to be published. The Zodiac Killer is said to have claimed over 37 lives, though no further victims have been found since 1969. This publicity obsessed murderer left police chilled and confused and continues to boggle minds of investigators to this day. And that is our top 10 mysteries the FBI couldn't solve. If you have any mysteries that you think could, you know, compete with our top 10, let us know in the comments below. Or if you have any theories about maybe solving some of these cold cases, who knows? I guess we could use the help. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.